Uh, yeah. NATO refers to this as a day zero connectivity, a capability Switzerland must have if needed. This is this is this is crazy. This is Switzerland preparing to be use usable to the NATO command structure, so that the the NATO commander in charge, which is always an American guy, uh, by the way, or naturally can like actually deploy <laughs> these troops at will. And Switzerland wants this. This document wants to prepare this a this ability. I don't get it. There is a there is, in my opinion, a very big problem in the in the defense department. It's the only way to reply to this because, uh, honestly, everything you read from this document it's uh, it's it's crazy, as you said. There is another chapter, not very detailed, to be honest. Maybe it's better because <laughs> uh, which emphasizes the need uh, in line with the foreign policy strategy paper for the next four years of Switzerland. To further develop this Swiss policy of promoting peace abroad. Uh, once again, the concept of security shift from neutrality to the activism abroad. But the fascinating thing, the fascinating thing is that Switzerland is doing this out in the open, right? It's not a hidden movement because you wrote a newsletter recently pointing out that there were two important policy documents that our government published it's out there it's it's not hidden that are actually quite shocking <laughs> to people like you and I who think that Switzerland should be neutral and that we actually should should carry that also in in our political discourse um can you maybe outline these two documents and why you were shocked at them and then we discuss them in detail yeah of course uh, so the the first document was a document for the new negotiation uh, of the Swiss government with the European Union. Uh, it's a discussion that uh, the Swiss already have some years ago. The idea was to create um, a partnership uh, and to create a common ground, a common low ground uh, between Switzerland and European Union. Uh, in fact, uh, without, uh, but luckily the, the government uh, um, stopped this uh, negotiation, but they decide to, to start it again now. And the idea is to, uh, because Switzerland is outside the European Union, but the idea was to um, make the, the European Union law and the Swiss law always more uh, compatible and make the Swiss law, in fact, under the decision of the European judges. I, I make it simple, but the fact yeah. is that uh, European no, judges will decide which law it's uh, it's okay for Switzerland. And yeah. It's, uh, just, just, as a, just as a little background, I mean, it's absolutely correct what you're saying. The, the main problem is because Switzerland is not part of the European Union, uh, Switzerland has been negotiating individual individual treaties with the EU on many different economic levels. And the EU at yeah. some point has said, guys, stop the piecemeal stuff. We don't want that anymore. We want you to conclude with us a framework, a framework agreement under which all future agreements will be part of. Uh, and, and the EU is saying, like, we want that or otherwise, Switzerland, we just won't do any deals with you anymore. And the Swiss were saying, OK, fine, let's let's negotiate. And part of the thing that collapsed was when the EU said, look, you have to subsume all of your uh, all of the decisions. Whenever we have disagreements, it will be it will be judged by an EU court. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And of course, uh, uh, yeah, our party, our party is has always been against any attempt to apply for EU membership. But uh, this is not, uh, of course, a membership to Euro European Union, but in fact, uh, it's uh, uh, um, a framework like this will uh, reduce the Swiss democratic margin, the national sovereignty, and any kind of possible independence. Because, uh, yeah, as you said, the, the uh, foreign judges are going to choose for us uh, what is good, what's going good, what's not good, and, and so on. And yeah, this is the first document. Uh, which is uh, which is bad, of course. But the other document, it's uh, in my opinion uh, also very very dangerous, and very very problematic. Uh, I have to to context it uh, a little bit. Um, 
the second document it's uh, um, regards uh, Switzerland and NATO relationship. So if we think about uh, Switzerland neutrality and NATO, it's like since the 19 years that I think that both from our domestic policy, but also I'm sure about that because of pressure from abroad, I think that our neutrality is less and less tolerated. And there are some, um, um, some way to try to modify and reduce it. Uh, for example, in 1993, there was a document which was published, which was called Neutrality 93, um, where slowly the government started to change the concept of Swiss neutrality very slow from the strict one of the World War II and the Cold War. Um, so and in 96, Switzerland joined the NATO Partnership for Peace program, this program for deepening relation between NATO and country who do not belong to it. Uh, this is, in my opinion, another clear sign of Switzerland new turn in, uh, in foreign security policy. But now to arrive to Nova Day and the war in Ukraine, uh, with the outbreak of war in Ukraine, uh, as, you, as we already said, the Federal Council take, took several actions, uh, decided to adopt European Union sanction. In summer 22, we organized a mock peace conference in southern Switzerland without inviting Russia. Uh, yeah, it was a conference where in reality, the, it seems more that they wanted to talk about how to divide economically Ukraine after the end of the war in a very colonial way. But um, in March uh, 2023, Switzerland participated for the first time with its federal, our federal council, councillor Viola Hammert, in the North Atlantic Council in NATO headquarters. And just a few days ago, uh, there is the news that Switzerland has decided to confirm the, um, to join the Sky Shield Initiative, the European Ground to Air Defense Initiative. So um, the fact is that, uh, ah, and uh, I was forgetting, which is very important. In 2022, the Federal Council presented a supplementary report on neutrality policy, where the concept of neutrality is put like in the second place in favor to a cooperation concept. Um, mm -hmm. And this cooperation refer only to NATO. So uh, this paper, which I'm going to talk about, uh, is part, of course, of a much broader context of progressive approach to European Union and NATO. And in fact, it start to give uh, um, uh, some answer about what we will see in the future. Uh, it explains several areas of both Swiss defense development, but especially this new fundamental concept of international cooperation of the Swiss military. Um, yeah, the, the first thing we notice when we read this document is this concept of international cooperation, which uh, refer exclusively to NATO and European Union. And in general, the war architecture of this document is, uh, is significant. In fact, it's like if Switzerland decided uh, one day that uh, it, it should only fear Russia and uh, yeah, in the future, maybe China too, and that NATO will never be a threat. Uh, NATO is uh, represent the value in which we believe, uh, European Union represent the value in which we believe, and we never must uh, be worried about a uh, European Union threat. It's really interesting because we are in the middle of Europe. We are surrounded by European country. Uh, and the only war that have historically threatened us was in Europe. So, But the Federal Council already decided uh, which side we, we choose in this new international uh, kind of Cold War. Politically. We politically made a very clear yeah. decision, yeah. very clear commitment. Yeah. And these commitments are spelled out in several like government documents it's not it's not hidden or anything this is and and the, the funny thing is the federal council always frames it as oh but it's not a problem with neutrality you know not this is not a problem it's not a problem but we are going to tell you now in the the million ways in which we will cooperate with one and only one one military organization and the big difference to the to the other document from before is that you know when it comes to eu cooperation Switzerland has kind of no choice because we are surrounded by the EU. At some level, yep. we need to find an agreement of how to work with them, right? 
because we need to exchange goods. I mean, Switzerland lives of trade. We cannot live without trade. We will die. So we need we are forced to something like that. But here, we're not necessarily forced to to work with NATO. We could work with others as well. We we have a domestic uh military industry, even though okay, it's maybe not viable on its own, but but you know, there's the pressure to cooperate is way not as high as the pressure to cooperate with the EU on economic levels. Um how do you make sense of this document and of this drive, this year-long drive now of Switzerland to cooperate, cooperate, cooperate? I think that it's both from foreign pressure. Uh, we also see when uh, when the war starts, uh, uh, the first movement of the Federal Council was a little more quiet. Uh, then the United States ambassador came in Switzerland, talked with the Federal Council, and a couple of days after, they decided to adopt all the European Union sanctions. And uh, yeah, so I think there are very strong pressure from abroad. Uh, as I said before, uh, Switzerland neutrality is uh, less and less tolerated. And uh, there is no political courage, in my opinion, in, inside Switzerland. Uh, and right. a little bit of hypocrisy. We, we, we say, yeah, maybe we do not send arms directly to Ukraine, so we are respecting international neutrality law because we don't take part in this conflict. The fact is that the important thing of neutrality is the, in my opinion, it's more the political aspect, how neutrality is recognized around the world. And yeah, what we are doing, uh, Switzerland decided what uh, side uh, to take part. And uh, yeah. I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I see it in the same way. Um, it's important, though, to know that you know the social democrats, the, the social democrats actually started um, in on February twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, a uh, twenty twenty two, a petition to push the federal council to adopt all sanctions. That was a left idea, and they they gathered hundred eighty thousand or two hundred thousand. I forgot the number, but a lot, a lot of online signatures. You know, on an online petition, a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're very proud of that, actually, that they managed to correct course, which is sad, <laughs> I, I think. But it, it, it shows, I mean, there is a domestic, there's an internal um, agreement in Switzerland of not, not everybody, but but a good part of this, of, of left lefty people in Switzerland are pro-sanction and pro-taking um, political sides. Yeah, as I said before, uh, mm... Yeah, I talk more about uh, the left because I think that this is the main problem. But in fact, uh, in, in the last year, it was less evident, but the left also, mm, it didn't support as it did now, the, the sanction or the war. But already when we talk about uh, Syria and Libya, we already start to see this uh, behavior of the left where they start to condemn uh, and slowly support foreign intervention in other country and now it's the total disaster and the total collapse of any stronger uh, yeah, we call the st strong thing of the left it totally disappear and they are pushed uh, and they are totally yeah uh, from this point of view equal to a liberal view and interventist view and yeah this is a this is a hegemony which uh, which works very well, um... <clears throat> yeah, which is which is fascinating. You know, I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think it's a sociological phenomenon that we are witnessing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. the question is, how do we decode it? And then let's maybe mo move back to that document, because I just want want mm. to read two passages of that. Uh, the, in that report on international defense uh, capabilities of Switzerland, yeah. just to show how extreme the language in that thing is. Under the heading of interoperability on page 21 or 22 somewhere, it says, let me read this, interoperability, mm -hmm. you know, they're talking about interoperability with NATO. <clears throat> to improve interoperability in the defense sector, a gradual participation in the operational capability concept, OCC, um, is to be implemented, OCC of, the, of NATO. This yeah. program allows for the assessment of the interoperability and military capabilities of units within a certification process to be able to collaborate 
tactically or in combat, the OCC should at least be implemented for units participating in exercises. If necessary, NATO could assess and certify the interoperability and military capabilities of the designated units in the Swiss Army. I mean, this is insane. This is like the document saying we need to be able to be certified by NATO. NATO needs yeah. to be able to yeah. put a stamp of approval on us yeah. to be to be approved to be NATO compatible. And they're still yeah. pretending that this has anything to do with neutrality. I mean, holy Jesus. Yeah, the most funny thing is that uh, the whole document, uh, the Federal Council keeps emphasizing that uh, cooperation should be intensified, but uh, we have to respect neutrality. And the more you read, the more you go down in the document, you think that you don't trust that, you can't trust that. It, uh, how do you want to do that? It's impossible because, yeah, interoperability, the NATO stamp, as you correctly said, uh, but there is also, for example, the possibility for Swiss troops to start uh, going in train facility around the Europe. We do that today in, uh, in Austria, but... Uh, Swiss government. Okay. Another wants... neutral country, Austria. Another neutral country. Yeah. Cop but, neutral, okay. neutral cooperation. Okay. Yeah, but the Swiss government wants to change the law. So potentially the whole army and not just the professional one, which is a small part of the Swiss army, all the militia conscript uh, will participate in potentially in this NATO exercise. And today a Swiss military personnel cannot be forced to participate in this course. Now they want to change the law in that direction. And um, they're proposing, they're proposing that this law should be changed. Yes, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, and now maybe they're going to what they want to propose to change the law too to adapt uh, to NATO. <laughs> our um, our time period of uh, Swiss Army recruit school to adapt to NATO standard. So, yeah, that, yeah, this is crazy. They want to send more defense experts around different NATO headquarters mm. and institutions. And also this will require to relax the law to make it uh, more simple. And uh, yeah, the fact is, it's clear that uh, in the medium and in the long term, all this collaboration of official and military militia with NATO uh, will slowly create over the time a political binding, a formament is binding with the NATO army and with their standard, with their conception, with their apparatus. Uh, there is a small part of this document, I think, and I'm not really sure it's this one or another one, where they said that the Swiss army will maintain their national languages to instruct our uh, soldier. So they are not going to speak English. Said, yeah, nice. It's good because today there are some officials who speak English better than German, but uh, uh, this is ridiculous compared to these uh, 34 pages of way to, to approach NATO, in fact. Um, and you know, yeah, it's, but, it's, it's, yeah. it's even worse. Like, it's not just that we that we create the, the, the all, everything that's necessary to integrate. I mean, we are already planning that it can be operationalized. Let me read you the second part, which is a few mm -hmm. a few pages down on page 27 under mission related projects and programs where the report talks about operational making Switzerland's uh, army operational for NATO. Oh, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it reads there, Switzerland actively participates in the Federated Mission Networking Project, the FMN. The aim of FMN is to integrate the command and communication systems of the armed forces into a single multinational multinational command system to establish an integral command capability on a technical level. FMN is considered a cornerstone of any cooperation with NATO. Therefore, Swiss participation is necessary. To gain access to all data of this project, Switzerland's ambition level is to be able to participate in this in its own uh, in its own compatible systems. This collaboration would enable Switzerland, if necessary, to integrate its own systems into NATO's command and communication system from the beginning of a joint exercise or operation, whether in military peacekeeping or defense. And military peacekeeping, don't get it wrong, this means offense. Military peacekeeping means peacekeeping abroad, means like foreign deployment. <laughs> and they're of thinking course. of that. Uh, yeah. NATO refers to this as a day zero connectivity, a capability Switzerland must have if needed. This is this is this is crazy. This is Switzerland preparing to be use usable 
to the NATO command structure so that the, the NATO commander in charge, which is always an American guy, uh, by the way, or naturally, can like actually deploy <laughs> these troops at will. And Switzerland wants this. This document wants to prepare this, a, this ability. I don't get it. There is a there is, in my opinion, a very big problem in the in the defense department. It's the only way to reply to this because, uh, honestly, everything you read from this document it's uh, it's it's crazy, as you said. There is another chapter, not very detailed, to be honest. Maybe it's better because <laughs> uh, which emphasizes the need uh, in line with the foreign policy strategy paper for the next four years of Switzerland. To further develop this Swiss policy of promoting peace abroad. Uh, once again, the concept of security shift from neutrality to the activism abroad. And yeah, we already have a Swiss peacekeeping mission under NATO in Kosovo. And uh, for me, it's uh, one, uh, it's more than enough. We have to uh, keep our soldier back in our country. But uh, Reading this document, uh, I start to think that maybe it's not going to be the only abroad operation of Swiss Army in the, in the future. Uh, another interesting point is that uh, NATO want to improve uh, the logistics within European Union. And so they want to make procedure for military transit through our country more flexible. This is problematic from a point of view, from neutrality. But uh, let me say a provocation. Uh, maybe since Switzerland is in the middle of Europe, maybe the next step, it will be to create some NATO bases in the middle of Europe to let uh, their soldier rest uh, and, uh, in our country. Uh, you know, you is... know the, way, the way to do this is very simple. You just declare a little piece extraterritorial and then you're fine. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Switzerland just, just last week or two weeks ago decided to actually host a NATO bases in Geneva. And they're saying, oh, but this is not a liaison office. This is just for, for NATO to, to coordinate with Geneva's international institution, yeah. not with us. They would never talk to us. You know, so this is this is what we are seeing is that on the operational level, Switzerland is being made ready, made ready to join, you know, so that when the political yeah. decision comes, it's just a political decision, but everything else is already ready. This is exactly, exactly. what happened to Sweden and Finland. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I will also like to add another point because... Uh, uh, to put a little bit aside neutrality, but uh, another point of view, the national security point of view of this uh, further uh, um, development of NATO cooperation, because uh, if we start to being certificated by NATO standard, if we start to be uh, instructed by NATO officer, uh, if we continue to buy only American armament, now we are going to buy F-35 fight jet, fighter jet. We are going to buy Patriot air defense system. Uh, if we continue to integrate uh, our military communication with NATO, we are also creating um, a military dependence risk. Because today, uh, the technological aspect of the army is even more and more important. And if there is no diversification, there is technological dependence. And so uh, I don't want to exaggerate, but the fact is that our army will be controlled from abroad. In fact, our system army will be controlled from uh, from foreign country. And yeah, um, I completely agree with you. I think that the, the Swiss government is preparing all the necessary procedure to be ready when they will decide to join NATO to just have to uh, send people to vote that and uh, and maybe also saying well in fact uh, it's not going to change much from today because today we already cooperate with NATO we already have interoperability we already are certificated by NATO so what's the difference between being like we are now and being a NATO a NATO partner member uh, that's why we need to really struggle uh, with this initiative that uh, will put the, the neutrality concept in Swiss constitution and so the, the forbidden to join NATO. This is, the, in my opinion, in the opinion of our party, is the main struggle today for a communist party in Switzerland. It's the most important struggle. 
Well, thank you. This is highly interesting. You know, it's you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the way that Switzerland participated in European colonialism without having a single own colony. The Swiss, for the whole 18th, 19th century, they never had a colony themselves. But wherever there was a European, European colonizers, you always had a couple of Swiss who were there as well, who participated in the whole thing and who, who benefited from the trade that the others didn't want to do. And, you know, in this way, Switzerland was always integrated, even though it looks at itself as, as being outside and apart. And it seems that this time the, the, the drive, the social drive and also the elite drive is toward integration into the Western alliance, uh, plain and simple. And that this happens with this double speak saying like, no, 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 it's cooperation. It's not, in, it's not integration, but interoperability, yes, and so on. So, and it happens out in the open. It's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really fascinating, but yeah, we don't want to to be naive. Uh, we are we are aware that uh, also the Swiss neutrality uh, during the year has been uh, exploited to make uh, some kind of dirty business. We know of uh, apartheid in South Africa and the Israeli issue. We also know that during the Cold War, for example, we were not officially sided with NATO, but. Of course, we were part of the Western Bloc. The fact is that uh, uh, we were recognized from the rest of the world as a neutral country. Yeah. Soviet Union know that we were part of the Western Bloc, but they still consider us a neutral country. And <clears throat> today, I think that Switzerland is is really going hard uh, and in an really explicit explicit way and it's losing all its credibility in the eye of the world. Um, Russia, for example, has immediately decided that we are no longer neutral. And as I said before, it's more important the political point of view of uh, neutrality recognition. And uh, I don't want to be the fetist. I think that thing can still turn around. But we really need the political courage now. We need to move forward and avoid any other action that will bring us closer to European Union and NATO because uh, we are really exaggerating. <laughs> this, uh, now it's really explicit our the position that Switzerland decided to took. Yeah, that's why we are working together. We want to change the course of the ship because we haven't yeah. hit the iceberg yet, but the iceberg is there and we are headed. So let's see if we can turn it around. Uh, Alberto Toni, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you too, uh, Pascal. Very nice to, to discuss with you. Thank you.